let's take some time to talk about GitHub terminology, because this terminology is going to help us understand what GitHub actually is and doing for us. So if you've ever heard the term fork it on GitHub, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about uh, the specific vernacular that's used um, when you're dealing with GitHub. Now even though we're going to talk a few minutes about actual GitHub, I feel like having a handle on the terminology is going to help us get a little bit further with that. So the first thing you might have heard of is a repo, and that stands for repository. Basically, a repository is just a directory or a storage space for a project or files. Now, you can have a repository stored locally on your computer, but it could also be kept on GitHub. You can keep any kind of files in your repository, so code files, text, images, really any type of file can reside inside of a repository. Branching. So what branching does is it allows for multiple people to work on a project at the same time without interrupting each other, without uh, stepping on each other's toes or overwriting each other's work, which is what used to happen back in the day where somebody would pull down a file and, the same, and another person would pull down the same file. They'd both work on something and whoever uploaded last would be the one that would get the uh, changes made to their file. And that really stunk. In this case, you branch something, you can work on it independently, and then bring it back in. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. But basically, they can branch off the current version, and then they'll make their own changes. And then when they're finished making those changes, they can merge that branch back into the main project. And then that new version will be the up-to-date version that everybody else will then branch off to from, from in the future. A pull request is something that enables the merging of changes from one branch to another. So we just talked about branches where you take um, a version of the files and you work on them and then you put them back in. When you want to put them back into the main project, you do what is called a pull request. So they want to merge the changes, you'll open a pull request, a pull request, which then gives everybody a chance to review the changes and approve them and then merge them back into the main project. Creating a fork on GitHub, right? You always hear fork it on GitHub. That's basically creating your own copy of somebody else's project. And it acts as a bridge between the original repository and your personal copy. You can also submit pull requests then to go back into that original project. If you want to say like, hey, I made this change, you might like it for your project. The person who um, the files were from originally can decide if they want to accept that or not. But you can create your own copy of that, assuming Git is basically open source, so you'd create your own copy of whatever the project is, and you can take it in an, in an entirely new direction and never merge it back to the main one, or you can submit a pull request and have it go back into the main, the main original file that you had pulled it from. So forking, as far as GitHub is concerned, is like the core of social coding. And they view it as, you know, you're putting your files up, they're open source, People then take those files and, and make new and better things with those files and they can choose to whether they're going to keep them separate or merge them back in using a pull request. So now that we kind of have some of that terminology down, branching, forking, uh, pull request, let's talk specifically about GitHub. There's about 14 million people um, in the GitHub community running about 35 million projects. These are projects that you can contribute to, projects being essentially 35 million repositories on GitHub. It was created in 2008, and GitHub themselves has about 550 people or so working on GitHub itself. So GitHub is actually a web-based Git repository hosting service. So I'll say that again slowly, it's a web-based Git repository hosting service. It offers all of the revision, uh, version controls that Git has, but it also has a few other features itself. They say that they are, and it's pretty widely believed, that they're the biggest collection of open source software. And it is also Interesting to read about problems that can happen when you are handing all the world's code in, on GitHub. Um, this is an article from Wired called The Problem with Putting All the World's Code on GitHub. 
and they kind of don't view it as a problem but what they're saying here is is the risk in that is that github obviously has to pay for space they're storing all these 35 million repositories and somehow they have to pay for that and so the concern becomes is in the past other um other file storage services such as um source fuse source forge sorry source forge has a um, sold ads and things like that and then it's just kind of turned into like a junkyard and it becomes much less useful and helpful and so the concern is like will that happen with github maybe maybe not so you should just know have a chance to look at maybe the downside of using github or at least acknowledge that there are some potential issues that could happen with it and more from a philosophical standpoint it's not currently like in train wreck mode um, but it's just something to keep in mind it's always good to know like the other side of the coin, you know, not just saying GitHub is fantastic all the time, you know, let's know about some of maybe the weaknesses that might exist for something like that. So let's take a look here at GitHub Flow. They have a really great guide that we're going to take a look at briefly here. And there's also a PDF version available for that as well. So um, my screen is a little bit crazy here, but Basically what you've got is you have an initial thing where you create a branch and they're showing you here how to create a branch. You add your commits to it. You open a pull request. You review the code. You deploy it. So once it's been reviewed, then you're um, in production and you make sure everything looks good in production and then you merge it back into the main timeline. So here you can see the whole thing. And this is available on guides.github.com. So GitHub is free for public and open source projects. So if you have something that you want to open source, you're not going to have any problems with your GitHub repository. You can get it. It's free. You're good to go. Sign up for a free account. Call it a day. If you want private repositories, you're going to have to pay for those. So it's $7 per month for personal as of April 20th, 2016. It's $25 per month for an organization and then $25,000 for a month for enterprise. And that is, you know, we're talking like Facebook they're gonna be your enterprise. But if you have just a regular organization or even a personal one, it's probably gonna make sense to pay for something like that because then you can keep your projects private but you still get all of the control that you would have with version um, versioning and using GitHub. So to get started, all you really need to do is sign up for GitHub, assuming that you're just going to have um, an open source project. You just go to github.com and in the upper right, you'll see a sign up box, and I'll show you how it looks here in just a moment. All you need to do is create a username, put in your email address and a password, and then you'll, it'll choose the free tier for you automatically. I assume that you'll want to keep that, but if you, want, if you know immediately that you're going to need a paid repository, you could do it at that time too. Then you'll receive an email, of course, to verify your email address, and you'll have your GitHub account. It's really that simple. And this is what it looks like. This is their homepage as of um, a couple weeks ago in April 2016. And here you'll see they have two options where you can just pick your username, email address, password, and sign up, or you can sign up at the upper right here. Either one's gonna be fine. And they really gear themselves towards developers, but if you're not a developer, don't be intimidated by the fact that they're saying, you know, millions of developers, 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 developers. It is okay for you too. There's no need to be freaked out by that. So GitHub has a desktop client, and we'll work on that a little bit here. But you can use it, and you can use Git and GitHub without using the command line. So if you're a designer and you're just not comfortable with that, or you're a developer, or you're like me, where you just like to have that graphical, uh, visual representation of what's going on, um, then you can go to desktop.github.com. They've got clients for Mac and Windows. Um, if you like the command line, go for it. So if you're a Linux person, you probably don't need the graphical user interface because you're just used to working with that. But they don't have a uh, they don't have a GUI for Linux people yet. But Mac and Windows, you've got a really nice looking desktop client. 
And if you need help with your desktop client, they have a lot of really good resources for that as well. So just go to help.github.com and you'll see desktop guides or FAQs. I found the guides to be really helpful. I found the FAQs to be less helpful, um, maybe just because I'm not running into any issues currently with it. But the guides were really comprehensive and easy to understand. Just as kind of a quick side note, you can add any Git repository to GitHub Desktop. So even if it's not a GitHub repository, you can add it and use it with the GitHub Desktop client. Um, you can take a quick look at the setup process, but basically what I'm going to show you here and what I really think is helpful for you to know is if you go to help um, and then tutorial, you can learn the, the workflow really quickly. And I'll show that here in just a moment. When we're using the GitHub desktop, it really helps to understand the GitHub symbols. I just found it, that because they're using a lot of visual representations of what's happening, memorizing these symbols and knowing what they represent really helped me out. So here you've got your option to clone the repositories, create branches, commit changes, and then share the code. And they're pretty, once you know what they are, they're pretty um, self-explanatory, but when you first look at them, you might look and think like, okay, what, what is this? What is this circle thing? So we've got clone, branch, commit, share. I'm gonna take a minute now in our next video to show you the desktop client so you can become familiar with that.